Welcome back to the channel. This is my 118 Capra. I bought a Mini 16 Fusion motor for it. Here's the unboxing video. There. I'll show you what should come in these boxes for a lot of creators that uh, do a whole video on unboxing. This is something that they should put in the box for those people. Right there. This is how much I hate unboxing videos. Before you begin this project, replacing your stock motor with a Mini 16 Fusion, I would recommend having a new receiver, radio, and some servo tape. You'll also need to have a 1.3 and a 1.5 millimeter uh, hex drive tool. Um, you will be removing the ESC from the stock position, and to do that, it is stuck on with adhesive from the back. You just pry it with a screwdriver. Uh, between, you can come in from the side to pull that off, but you will need that adhesive tape, double-sided tape, to put your new receiver in the place of the old one. Some general specifications. You'll be able to use your same batteries you've been using, although you can use a 3S. This plugs into the receiver. This is a signal wire in case you decide to program it, and then you got your on-off button. It is a 3000 kV motor, so I'm expecting great things about it. Also, these letters here, FOC, are what I wanted to see a lot because it will remove the one thing that I really can't stand about the 118 Capra, which is the motor that has absolutely no torque. In fairness, I have added a bit of brass to it. All the links are brass, and uh, these are brass as well, so it's a little heavier than stock, but not much. Anyway, uh, we're going to fix that today. I'm not going to show you the whole process of putting this in. I'm just going to do it, and then I'll give you my um, thoughts on how it went. All right, sorry for the cluttered screen, but I have gutted the Capra. So I just took the rear suspension links all off and then undid this, and then this flops out of the way. I also undid the center links, and that allows you access to the entire bottom. One of the bad news things about this particular motor that probably nobody's told you is it's supposed to be amazing. I don't know if it is or not, but this ESC that comes with it cannot be used with the brushless motor. So no big loss. Um, another note, side note, these connectors that hold this motor on are incredibly strong. Um, they come sealed up like this with the rubber over them, but if I pulled on those any harder, I think they would have broken. So if you ever have to take that apart, it's going to be a chore. I mean, it can be done. I don't care to because I'll just keep it all intact. And uh, the way you remove the ESC from the truck is just pry it out. It's held in with adhesive on the backside, and it is tucked up in this box back in here. So I have this SRX300 Spectrum receiver that I believe will actually, yeah, it should be, it's actually a little smaller than the one it's replacing. I'm going to put it right in that same spot with adhesive. And this is a three channel radio. So uh, I'm going to buy a light kit for it, similar to my larger Capra and my uh, TRX, the TRX Sport, because that's a great uh, light kit. It's cheap. It's like eight bucks on eBay. Anyway, I'll be able to turn the lights on and off and save battery life if I don't need the lights. One of the things that I liked about this truck when I bought it is the fact that it did have the lights, but the lights also cost a run time. So I just ended up unplugging them. The ability to be able to turn them on and off at will from the controller is going to be a great thing. From what I'm learning, it's best to do the calibration of this outside of the car. And you want to set the endpoints for the um, throttle, brake, and neutral position for uh, just dead stop. So I've got this plugged in uh, to the number two channel. It says throttle and uh, orientation matters. You got to put the black wire on the negative side. So uh, there it is. You see it. Signal wire plus wire, negative wire. And I'm just going to turn it on. I'll link the video on how and the uh, how to do the calibration because I'm not going to show you here. I'm just trying to get you an overview of how to put this in. But uh, I'll start you off with uh, the link to go to his video. 
and uh, he'll tell you how to do it. I'll even give you a timestamp to go straight to it. I'll talk about standard things when mounting a motor. Uh, it does have multiple positions of how it can be mounted. Be mindful of where uh, the wires are coming out because you want them clocked in a direction where they're not going to touch the axle, I'm sorry, the uh, drive shaft, or exit into a portion of the car where there's no room. So in this case, it's just going to come out sideways, and I think that'll be great. I think it'll still fit in there with the passenger compartment, so I don't foresee that being a problem. But it's going to leave room for other things inside. Well, after the last thing I showed you, it went together exactly as you would expect it. Most of you who watch my channel are builders anyway, so you don't care about watching mundane things like just putting a rig back together. Uh, one thing I do have here is my rule of save all the pieces. So this is a complete ESC, the stock one, ESC receiver, motor, and controller all in one. And I'll put this in the hoarding box of RC parts that I have. And uh, as you know, I'll probably end up using this at some point in the future. Don't know what for yet, but maybe someday. So uh, this is a, a ready-to-go system it, minus a uh, servo. But anyway, I did pull the batteries out of it because you don't want to store them. This went back together exactly as you would expect. Uh, just a regular truck putting it back together. But this is the complete motor ESC receiver and uh, radio that I will no longer need with this build because that's all been replaced with basically 10 scale stuff from the Capra that I bought two years ago. So those uh, electronics are back in a Capra, this one. And uh, once again, uh, if you're gonna store something like this, pull the batteries out so that they don't leak and ruin all the contacts in there. But we're gonna go over and uh, do a little testing. Welcome back to the Center for Off-Road Research, Shenanigans, and Science. We haven't done a video over here in a long time because it's summer and I go outside, but uh, it is also in the process of a redesign. So uh, be patient with me here. I've just got rocks piled up randomly. There are no set lines at this point, but I did want to take a chance to find out how this actually runs with the new motor. And you can see the blocks over there on the ground that I used to prop rocks up in various places. But I'm going to show you a speed run real quick. And that is very similar to a 10 scale. Uh, it's, it's got speed now, which is it didn't have before. So let's try the low end. Let's see how slow it can crawl. And uh, we'll see what that FOC does. That is that low speed control that I have never had in a 118 before. Let's just see how well it can pop up here. One thing I didn't like about this truck before was the motor was so weak that it, in order to make enough torque for it to move on obstacles, you had to get into it so deep that when it finally freed itself up, it would just, lur just lurch forward because it was at such a high throttle setting. Well, with these FOC units, it's almost like cruise control for the RPM, where it's you. it will run at the same speed regardless of load based upon wherever the trigger pull is. So at this trigger pull setting, it's going to go this fast regardless of the type of terrain it's having to go over it or the load imposed by the terrain but this is fantastic look at this i've got all day to figure out how well or how uh where the best line is that's what i'm trying to say but it's got plenty of power and the smoothness this this is uh 10 scale control now 10 scale power And I have waited for this motor. The nice thing about it is when you have a brush motor, it just doesn't have the torque of a brushless. It never will. And uh, 
The only thing I'm worried about now is it's got so much torque. I'm probably going to start bending stub shafts a little easier if I'm not real careful. When you swap over to a brushless system, you really have to pay attention to the tires deforming because it's going to deliver power in a way that you may not realize. Uh, when you got a brush system, the more you uh, pull back, the more you get. And it's got a little more spongy feel in the trigger. Well, these uh, FOC motors, I can't remember what it's, something field, I don't know, field something control or something, I don't remember. But anyway, what I'm trying to say is you may not realize when the motor is loading up the drivetrain. So you got to be real careful with that. Trying to take the truck where it doesn't want to go, but I want to take that wheel right over the point. And it's probably not going to let me do it. But I'm mainly just wanting to see what kind of throttle control I have. Those of you who drive uh, either the Fusion or the Firma 2-in-1 2300 motors or 1800 kV motors, this, this motor is Fusion good. It is a Fusion and uh, really impressed with it. This has just removed the very thing I disliked about this truck, which is that terrible torque that the stock motor has, or I should say lax. I will hook this up to a program card and change some settings on it. One thing with the stock setting it has that I don't like is the fact that when I'm full throttle, if I release the trigger, there's about a half second lag before it wants to let go of that speed. So I need to figure out how to get rid of that delay because if I want it to stop, I need it to stop. I want it to do it exactly when I tell it to. And right now it doesn't want to do that. But at crawling speed like this, it doesn't matter. It's exactly as you would expect. So this is perfect. Pretty happy with it. Anyway, if you like the video, throw a like up for me. Um, I'll answer any questions for you if I ha if you come up with any, as long as I know the answer. If not, I'll try to get it for you. And uh, this is absolutely a fantastic motor. It will do for the one eight, the Fusion motor, this Mini 16, will do for the 118s what the Fusion motors did for the 10 scale trucks. It's that good. That's all for tonight. We'll talk to you later.